Um, so let's go to uh, some Q&A with our audience. Um, now, let me uh, start with this one for Marcia. Um, so are there any funny stories uh, that uh, Major Boniface used to tell, or do you have any funny stories about uh, Art Boniface that you would like to share? And please keep in mind, this is PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> Um, uh, it, uh, when, uh, he first got there, uh, he did not, I think, understand the realization of how many dignitaries would be coming up during his tour. And, um, they would all say, oh, we're coming up to see Captain Boniface. And one of them was General Stillwell's son, who was in Korea with along with Art and Art knew him real well because at what we at West Point um, some of the water polo players who Art took care of were also in his company so um, Art would get a phone call from him every couple of weeks and say gee Art I'd love to come up and have dinner at with you and hear what's going on. And Art would say in the beginning, Art would say, that's great. I'm, I'm glad you're coming up. He said, well, I'm, I'm bringing a friend. And Art would say, fine. And that's all he would know until General Steelwell <laughs> would come with him. And uh, Art would, would be very flustered for a great period of time because it, he wasn't he wasn't very good with four-star generals. <laughs> But, you know, nobody ever came to see Art, really. Even his classmates who served during that year in other places in Korea, they wanted to have dinner with the Swiss chef who was up there at the time. World-renowned. And they still are. <laughs> are they still there? Yeah. Oh uh, they God. still put out a pretty good spread, as uh, Sean funny. knows. Um, but no, I yeah. Ask Sean. I wouldn't believe that they were still there. <laughs> So, you know, the classic, you know, make sure you know exactly who's coming for dinner and because a right. friend can turn into somebody that uh, is far beyond just a friend. Right. Well, he was, uh, I'm sure he was afraid that Art would have put his blues on in order to meet them when they came in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so um, let's go to Sean real quick. Um, so uh, let's see this question. What are some things that people uh, misunderstand about the DMZ and the U.S. and Korean troops that are stationed in the DMZ. Any thoughts? I think I think most of America doesn't realize that we have U.S. forces on literally on the North Korean border. Um, I think everyone's you know vaguely familiar that we have a, a deterrence force and USFK over there. Uh, um, but I often find when I tell people I was stationed inside the DMZ that they're, they're very surprised. Um, I think that people that are familiar with our role there, people inside the army, sometimes think that the JSA is just about the tours and about the distinguished visitors that come up to try to understand um, and don't realize that, you know, the troops are putting on the nods and, and rucking up and, and patrolling the DMZ um, and that it's still a very dangerous place. I think oftentimes when people come and visit, they get that feeling and that sense that Andrew talked about. The tension is, is always there. Um, but I think that a lot of folks in the military just think it's the place where you take some pictures at the blue building um, and not realizing what the troops are doing every single day um, to keep that place available for those visitors. Yeah, so um, the, for the folks that uh, go and visit, and, and visiting uh, Panmunjom is one of the big tourist attractions in South Korea. Um, they they probably only see about 10% of what y'all do, right? I mean, in terms of <laughs> uh, being able to see, but there's like 90% of it that just goes so hard into all the training, the preparation. Uh, all of y'all got to be ready when, when you have uh, visitors in the uh, JSA, uh, so it, it is quite remarkable uh, how well trained y'all are and how great the troops are. I mean, it's it's sure. it's not an understatement uh, by I mean overstatement by any means. No, sir. I would I'd also say that I, I think it's a really great example of the alliance. Um, you know, the, the alliance is strong. We know this, uh, but but that's where we're fully fully integrated. 
uh, U.S. and ROC in the same battalion following orders from UNC. Uh, it, it's just, I, I think that that's a really special part about it is that it, in, in any alliance, there's often going to be some political uh, dilemmas or problems. And we saw that from 2018 to 2020 as we we're negotiating agreements. But the troops, the folks that are that are doing the work, this, the, the brotherhood and the commitment between U.S. and ROC troops is rock solid. Okay. Um, let, let me just ask uh, the uh, Bonifist family. Uh, uh, this might be a uh, touchy question to ask you. Um, so a common um, uh, observation by um, Korean war veterans as well as Korea defense veterans who come back to Korea after years and some of them many decades they talk about how their uh, service in Korea, seeing how Korea is now, it made it worth it for them. Uh, a lot of Korean veterans, you know, they, they fought in the Korean War. They never came back to Korea until the modern age, you know, in the 2000s. And they saw Korea literally as one of the most developed countries in the world. And they see that how their service and sacrifices led to South Korea being the way it is. And for the first time in their lives, a lot of them have said, to me, fighting in Korea was worth it. Okay, that, that is a common uh, theme and observations that our veterans make. So what do you think? And obviously losing a family member is difficult, but do you think his service and what he stood for and all of the great lessons that have followed uh, from him. Um, do you think that uh, his service in Korea was uh, worth it in your observations? I, I, as his wife, absolutely feel as though he did the best job that could be done. Um, he enjoyed it. He cared about about everybody. He knew that everybody had their job and they would have his back as he would have their back because that's the way he was as the commander there of, the, of that part of the unit. And um, I think he would be thrilled to see that mm. all the work that the Americans did in the Korean War and since all helped to build a Korea that is a wonderful place and is a world world site. And uh, I, I am, I am not. What, what's the word? Um, I, I'm uh, glad he got his service done, and he did it with honor and dignity. Oh, thank you, Marcia. You're welcome. That I, I know and you were young, I but say, yeah, I would have to say um, his relationship with his South Korean counterpart, Mr. Kim, I think was something that was not common practice in the 70s. And I think the relationship that he and Mr. Kim had um, was a good example and role model for how the South Koreans and the American troops are working together now. So I think that would thrill him because I'm not sure that previous people in the roles he was in had a same connection, had a similar connection, mm -hmm. but he and Mr. Kim had love and respect for each other and brought their troops together a lot. And I do think from what I've heard from Mr. Kim, especially that that was something new in the seventies. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think that relationship wow. between them and our continued relationship with Mr. Kim shows that that was important at the time. And I think that's been carried on. Okay. I agree. Wonderful. Andrew, would you like to add anything? I know uh, you, you weren't alive at the time, but. <laughs> I mean, seeing from the relationship that like Mr. Kim still like to, keeps up with us every year around Christmas time, seeing how we're doing, seeing how I'm doing. I, yeah. I think it really seems like Mr. Kim took it on himself to be more of like a father figure to me and be like the grandpa that I was never yeah. able to because Art had passed away so soon. So I think like that's uh, what I feel now with Mr. Kim, like him keeping up with the family, he basically considers him uh, myself his like grandson, 
with the relationship from the very, incident. Very true. Wow. Pretty amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I know that potentially that was a difficult question. Um, so let me go to um, um, one of our audience members also gave us a, a question. Uh, does the family feel that cutting the tree was an appropriate response? Uh, can, can, I, can I talk to that? Sure. A couple, a couple of years ago, I got a phone call from the Korean embassy in, in, in New York City, and they said that they were coming down to Washington and they wanted us Mrs. Barrett and I to be there. They needed Mrs. Barrett's address. And um, we had no idea why they wanted us down there. And we we both got there. And uh, also um, Captain uh, Lieutenant Barrett's two sisters were also with us. And the, to make a long story short, the president of Korea was about to lay a wreath at the Korean War Memorial. And we were honored guests and we were in the front row and we would be shaking hands with the vice president of the United States and also the president of Korea. So I was the first one in our group that he got to. And just before that, the Korean soldier said, our president is going to tell you something that not many people know about. And I, that left us in a, in a wash. We didn't know what that was about. And as he shook my hand, the president, who is now still the president of Korea, his interpreter told me that that man was, a, was in the army at the time of Art's death. And he was one of the men in the white jujitsu uniforms who oh. led the group in to chop mm. down the tree. Mm. Wow. And he wanted to apologize to the both of us and also to thank us for our husband's work. Mm. I had no idea. None of us had any idea that that was going to happen. Yeah. And he apologized for not being able to make a difference. He just wasn't able to get there in time. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. Um, so uh, we have another question from our audience members. Um, and so um, this might go to uh, Sean and me. Uh, the the uh, question or comment is, as a military spouse currently with my husband serving in Korea, why doesn't the military better educate the spouses on the real dangers and events that has led to the U.S. serving and continue to serve in Korea? During in-processing, a cultural awareness briefing is given to the military and spouses, um, to the military, and spouses may attend, but nothing is presented or said about this event or the events in 2017. Uh, now, I understand, Sean, you're still serving on active duty. So if you're not comfortable uh, addressing this, uh, I'll, I'll, I've got just a couple of thoughts. You can go ahead, sir, and I, I'll jump in if there's anything else. So first of all, um, one, really appreciate uh, the military spouses tuning in. Thank you. Um, you know, we talk about how um, our service members are assigned there and they serve there because <laughs> that's their duty. But when family members go, uh, whether they're physically there or back home, they're serving as well. Uh, there's no doubt about that. Um, to the point about uh, better education, I'm not sure exactly what's um, pre presented uh, in processing. Um, I'm glad that spouses can attend and I applaud you for going uh, and trying to understand better. Uh, I think part of it is there, there's a careful balance. Uh, strategically that also touches down to personal that um, the North Korean threat is real and that's why you're there. And as Sean Morrow talked about, we've got to be ready at all times. Um, uh, and the realities are the examples of the ax murder incident and then the, uh, the North Korean defector is that by being prepared at all times with our training, our readiness, 
um, may not always turn out the way that we want, um, but I think that we can be rest assured that overall our U.S. military working with our Korean allies uh, almost always uh, acts appropriately. Um, so, you know, um, this is something that uh, we may um, um, pro provide as feedback back to the commands, um, but I think that there's just a fine line that they've got to uh, walk between uh, overselling the threat uh, uh, versus, no, that there's a real threat and we need to be there and we need to be prepared. So anything that you want to add, Sean? Sir, that, that's really good. I, I think, first of all, I want to second just the gratitude to you and to your spouse for for serving in our military and and especially in Korea. I, I hope if you're there in Korea that you're enjoying it and seeing what what the country has to offer. Um, I think I want to tell you that that your spouse is in a safe place. K Korea, there is a threat, but your spouse is getting some of the best training over there in Korea that I've ever had in the military, because you can focus a little bit more over there than, than I think sometimes you can back home. Um, he's well-resourced. Uh, and the, the incidents that have happened in Pamela and Jam are very public and very emotional, but they're also extraordinarily rare. Um, and I think that this sort of goes to another question on here um, about, you know, why did the decision, why was there a decision to chop the tree or was that appropriate? N nobody on that day thought that this would escalate to murder. Um, the troops, especially folks that are dialed in from our KDVA, uh, there's probably folks that got into some pretty serious fist fights in the 60s and 70s. It was a very common occurrence to get in real and severe fist fights. And that was the risk that, that the team was taking in 1976 that maybe there was going to be a dust up but it it, it wasn't it wasn't ever going to go as far as it went that's not nobody expected that and so i i'm glad you asked that question and and i hope that our answers you know address it a, a little bit um but the the danger of death in an incident like this is extraordinarily rare but it's yeah. just a reminder that we must be ready and i'm grateful that you and your family are there and are part of this team. Sean, very well done. Um, let me just read some comments from um, our audience members, not necessarily questions, but they just wanna give you some feedback, especially to the Boniface family. Uh, one of our, our audience members said, I, I, I wandered across this incident, this is a uh, spouse, earlier this year and I have been intrigued since reading the details of the loss of the two American soldiers and the decisions that had to be made about how to handle it. My husband served at Camp Edwards shortly after this occurred. My heart went out to the families who lost their loved ones. It is a blessing to actually put a face to them today. I am so happy that I participated today. I am very proud of my husband's service also. He now suffers from a variety of uh, Agent Orange related uh, presumptives and he, has, he was an excellent soldier and was willing to give his life if required. Um, another uh, audience member said, I hope the family knows how much I respect their decision to take part in this webinar. Thank you. It means so much to me and I'm so sure, uh, and I'm, I'm sure to my buddies that Captain Boniface and Lieutenant Barrett are remembered and honored. And that's from um, David Benbow, uh, formerly Sergeant Benbow, who served in the DMZ in 69 and 68. Um, let me provide some other uh, comments for, real quick. Uh, one of our um, audience members said, I was a 18 year old sailor on CV 41 at that time. Till this day, I'm so proud of that. Um, another audience member said, Art and uh, Barrett did not die in vain, needs to be said. Um, another audience member said, after 18 months and two ID during the time Art was there, I was leaving on the date the ax murder occurred 
and anyone who was leaving was called back. We were ready to go to war. I know there were always small incidents that could have escalated into much bigger problems, especially during patrols. Okay. They were all taken off planes. Um, let's see. So um, it is an honor to hear the personal stories from the Bonas family. When I was serving at Camp Freeze in 1991, we were taught about the axe murder incident as a reminder of what can happen on the DMZ. Captain Boniface and um, Lieutenant uh, Barrett's service has never been forgotten and that is certainly true. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, we're at the close of our uh, webinar. Thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate <laughs> when our audience members uh, 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 actively participate with us very touched by the stories and insights from our great uh, guests. Uh, and KDVA, we really appreciate these stories. Uh, they're the ones who uh, make the difference in keeping our bonds strong with South Korea and the United States. Uh, and KDVA's theme for 2022 is we are the alliance. We, the people that you see here and the people in the audience. And the Boniface family, Lieutenant Colonel Morrow, are the alliance because it would not be the strong without them. I would like to sincerely thank Marcia, Beth, and Andrew Boniface, and Lieutenant Colonel Sean Morrow. You can find stories like the ones you heard today in the KDVA Quarterly Journal. We are accepting articles until August 31st, and the journal will be published in late September. One of the KDVA interns will turn uh, what we heard today into uh, articles for the journal. KDVA recently conducted our first KDVA reunion in Washington, D.C on July 26 to 28. It was the first time that KDVA members gathered to share stories about their service, connect with members from all around the world, and learn more about the ROK US Alliance, the veterans who support and serve the Alliance. We hope you'll be able to join us in future reunions. The Korean Ministry of Patriots and Veterans Affairs or MPVA sponsored the reunion. And they're also sponsoring the upcoming Korea Revisit Program for uh, Defense Veterans. We have extended the application to Friday, August 19th. That's coming up here. So please go to kdva.vet, that's V-E-T, to apply. This is an incredible program in which the Korean government will pay for all expenses for the defense veteran plus half of a companion's airfare. And then once in Korea, the Korean government and the Korean people will welcome and thank our veterans and their families for their service and sacrifices. Finally, the KDVA internship program is accepting applications for our 2022-2023 intern class. If you would like to add your voice in supporting this alliance, please consider joining KDVA. It is free and it literally only takes a few minutes at kdva.vet. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. And we look forward to continuing to work together. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.